Hey guys, thanks for showing up. We're gonna start here in just a few minutes. We just gotta connect one more of the team members. Oh, just popped in. All right, well, I mean, people are showing up at 12 sharp. I guess we better get started. Uh, we'll go through a few quick little updates and summaries just to give people a chance to kind of filter in. Uh, it's always a bit tough since everybody's got different phones. But my name is Casey Macbeth. I am part of the three-headed monster team. We're bringing you Beyond Humanity Colonies and so much more. We've got Blosky and Max with us today, the co-designers hey for our, all the games. How's it going, guys? Say hi. Howdy. <laughs> hi. <laughs> <laughs> Voice of God over here. Okay. Anyways, so as you guys know, there's been a lot going on. It's been about a month since our last AMA, which was incredibly fun. We had a great time with that one. Hopefully we can do the same again here. Uh, we're going to try a few new things uh, of which we want to start adding a bit more themes to some of these AMAs. So this time our theme is going to be about megacorps. It's not going to be only megacorps, but we are going to try to focus on that and get a lot of information out there as that's a feature that's coming up to the online metagame Exogen very soon. So Max, I know you're probably pretty excited to talk about that, right? Kind of. Okay, so not really. Oh my God, well, Jesus, it's me, of course. Let's all silence our cell phones. Um, sorry, everybody. Uh, it's so much, yeah, it's, I mean, you can't stop life. It just always happens. Life will find a way to mess up everything. Yeah. Um, so some of the things that we want to shout out just at the top of this, because there's so many things going on. There's a lot of great questions we have to answer. We know it's going to take some time, but there are a couple small things that we want to get to. Um, one of which involves what we're doing right now, which is the AMAs. And uh, I don't know if you checked out last time. We tried to make it easy. We know not everybody can join in live. I mean, we've got you know, 1600 backers, something like that already. Um, it's unlikely to get everybody online at the same time. So we are putting these out on YouTube. We're taking the audio, we're sending it, uh, we're sending it out out there, but we've tried a few new things. We've created a table of contents. We've created timestamps. You can see the questions. You can click around. If you just go to the video description, it's really fantastic. So if there are any of you out there who only are interested in a few small certain things or aspects we're trying to make that a lot easier for you obviously most people are going to put an ama on if it's a video in the background but you know we've added a few things to keep it visually interesting so if you just want to throw it on a tv and just have something kind of playing in the background to help keep you distracted from all the things going on in real life that's now an option um what a big thing is that we want to say is maybe some people don't know this but we throw we've been throwing Easter eggs in to all of our AMA videos at the end there. Some are just for fun, uh, but some of them have started to introduce concepts and parts of the lore that will become important shortly thereafter. But Max, tell me about the one that we've been working on this week, because I don't know about you, but I've been working most of the day for like the last two days on this upcoming Easter egg, but I think you've been spending a lot more time on it. <laughs> Definitely, our computers are spending a lot of more time on it. Oh so, my, yeah. What's 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 the render times at now? Like the total? I don't know. At least uh, sixty hours altogether, not including the tests that we've been Just running. That. Yeah, I'm learning oh, a right, lot right. lately. <laughs> New things about particle systems, physics, and re-entry uh, into the atmosphere that oh. is pretty much driving me crazy. Uh, last few okay, days well, I've spent learning about it yeah let's not let's not give too much away but yeah no it's it's really been a lot of fun and frustration so we'll see but so this is a big one so if you guys haven't seen any of the AMA videos before make sure you check them out check out the Easter eggs they're really fun they're just like little things and you know to be honest I'm not even sure if they are Easter eggs as Easter eggs are defined as something that is like unusual fine we keep trying to point everybody at them so I hey, hey, hey case casey we've got easter eggs inside of easter eggs so especially in this well, that, video okay, that is true yeah especially yeah, in this video you will be able to find some hidden clues about a couple of different things and some corps may those may be a bit uh, more happy about it than others anyways oh, man yeah 
the confusion. You know, I, I just want to say my apologies to anybody out there who might be discouraged by it. I, you know, sometimes I get ahead of myself. At any rate, um, some of the other things we want to talk about just at the top is um, we want to let you guys know again about our wiki that we're putting together. Obviously, there is a lot going into Beyond Humanities, the universe. Uh, a lot of things, both in the history and the lore, that do tie in together, and some things may help inform others. You know, if you just want to play a board game, that's fine. If you want more, we're really building a big amazing universe out there full of interconnected parts pieces players and factions um, but it can get a little daunting it can get confusing especially for newcomers so we want to ask all of you if you're interested if you're excited if you've been having fun with some of the lore and the backstory which again will always come into play down the road uh, there's a wiki now and we need people to help us fill it out i mean obviously we are Constantly slammed with production crunches as well as self-imposed uh, Easter egg issues and tasks. So there is that. So we could definitely use some help in filling out this wiki. Um, so if you're interested, if you want to be part of that team, if you want to help build some resources to help new players, new backers, uh, reach out to us. Contact us on Discord and we will put you in the team. We'll help try to get you guys started because right now... Um, we're stretched a little thin. That's that's a place where we could definitely use some support. <clears throat> um, so quickly, just piggybacking off that, Max, I don't know if you want to jump in here and help me with some of this, but um, we did want to go through a recap of some of the news that's been happening online. Uh, I don't know if you guys recall the full story of the Genesis One. That's sort of been kind of tied up with a bow. We've found a dis a disturbing signal from an alien planet, Pulsar, only to find out that it was a Terran Republic ship much closer to Earth. Nobody knew existed. Uh, derelict, everybody's dead. Big issues with trying to decode the signal, but with the cognition system, uh, the KE hopping in to help get plans for lunar bases. I mean, that's just that's just been a giant mess of parts and pieces. Max, any, any thoughts on the Genesis 1? <laughs> I shouldn't be answering this question, <laughs> definitely. It is an end of it, I may say, uh, as uh, all of those things that are happening uh, may seem a bit disconnected, but this is one universe. So just pay attention to details, especially that everything is uh, interconnected as a one larger plot. And just be sure about one thing. If you are uh, just right now joining the, 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 the storyline, uh, we've got a BH Colonies uh, lore page uh, that you may visit and you may catch up with all the news as well. Hopefully with Wiki, we'll have additional uh, pages that will explain some of the uh, names, uh, personas that we've got in this universe because that may be, <laughs> that may be a bit confusing after how many? 60, 70 news already that we've got from this world? Uh, I think we launched in 66, and I think we're just about up to, we're getting cl pretty close to 2100, aren't we? We're, we're in the 290s right now. Yeah, yeah. So th this, those things aren't uh, disconnected. So all events that are happening inside of a uh, Beyond Humanity uh, common storyline will be affecting as well in the future the, the BHC and players that will be playing the board game. So this is a fundament that we are building all together with you guys. Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's funny. Um, we've got Sean in the comments saying he's letting us know it's 1996. That was actually the last news, but I think our current time right now is uh, February 2097 so we're getting pretty close there's might have to plan some sort of a new year celebration for 2100 um and then so yeah no the one thing i've talked to a few people about in different private chats and in real life is um you know we've got such a limited amount of space for these news uh, i mean obviously it's more than a tweet but we got to keep it a little short for it to you know fit on the page and make sense for the lore website page uh, so everything's kind of jam-packed in there. So there's really no extra fluff. All of it means something at some point. Maybe it doesn't mean anything right now, but we, we don't put anything in there that doesn't mean something to somebody. Um, okay, so anyways, going back to that. Yeah, 
Genesis one, that's nowhere near tied up, but you know, we're, we're at a kind of a, an interesting moment with that. Good news for a lot of the corporations, uh, Arya Bakshi, a uh, long time proponent or antagonist of the corporations has passed away. Let's all take a moment of silence for her. Yeah. Okay. That's plenty. Yeah, that's <laughs> enough. Uh, <laughs> uh, of course with her passing, that does leave the prime Senate in a bit of a weird spot and with some newer faces to the scene, not necessarily newer senators. Uh, the prime Senate was actually disbanded, which hopefully will create a smoother workflow for bureaucracy. We'll see. Uh, it does right now. It doesn't seem like anything terrible has happened from it. So maybe something good will. I mean, they do People say are no... happy. Citizens yeah. on, back on Terra are happy uh, about it. Yeah. So, I mean, no bad news is kind of good news. Uh, one good thing, it depends on, you know, how you view things. This can definitely get a little polarizing, but, uh, there was finally a successful operation against the Knights Errant. Uh, obviously they've had a bit of a spotty checkered past. Um, some people fully for them, some people realizing or feeling that there might be a lot more to the situation, maybe a, a bit of a gray zone. Uh, but Ventura victims of a recent hack from the ke actually were able to mobilize and you know try to apprehend some of the knights errants in a little local cell on mars uh, unfortunately some lives were lost uh, but you know all's well that ends well kind of ended well and i guess the last kind of quick recap for all the things going on uh <laughs> and then lots of people died yeah um Last recap is, you know, moving to Mars. Uh, um, our good friend Ulrich over from Ventura, he's offering all corporations assistance in moving their headquarters to Mars. It's a hundred licenses, but, you know, the rest of the um, the rest of the logistics are all worked out with Ventura. I mean, there's, you know, there's a few really great benefits. Obviously, if you're also into scientific research and production, there are benefits for working in low gravity for different types of electronics and manufacturing. Uh, but also, you know, it's obviously been a bit of tension between corporations and the Terran Republic. So, you know, a way to get a little un out from under the thumb, if it were. And then, you know, there's a lot to say for working in close proximity with other like-minded people. So when you think of and like, I don't know if this is something. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't forget, Casey, about uh, way cheaper and affordable uh, plasteel. As Mars has got a oh, shitload yeah. of uh, resources in this case. Of course, water is, uh, is scarce and that's a main issue on Mars. But still, plasteel, it's dear to cheap over there. And that, that's one of the major uh, differences right now for the colonies. But uh, you'll remember that you've moved your corporation in the future when you'll be getting some extra bonus or bogus from, from it. Uh, as this stays with your account, this stays with your corporation, that's a part of your story, of your uh, fundament uh, in Exogen. So one additional thing is that currently Ventura is uh, providing an information that around 90% of corps that did respond responded that they are moving their HQs to, to, to Mars. So that's... Oh, wow. Yeah. He wouldn't like to call himself a, call himself a Martian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we saw how well that worked out for Matt Damon, so... Um, and yeah, Sean, we, we, I know, I see. We're, I'm trying to get back to it. There's a lot of other stuff to do, but I plan on trying to unpack that letter and do a proper response, but in time, in time. Um, and then, you know, that kind of takes us, Max, what you're saying about how this stays with your corporation to one of the more interesting things. So there was a big update to Exogen recently, and that was kind of multifold. Like there was a technological side to it, you know, a programming side, and then there's a fundamental side. So, Max, can you tell me just a little bit about just the like the tech programming side of the update? Because I'd like to talk about what you know, the branching system is going to be. But can you tell us a bit about what's been updated recently uh, with the online game? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So that was uh, <laughs> that was our second uh, 
second tryout session with this new update because the first deploy was uh, unsuccessful and we needed to roll it back. And I know that the difference uh, when you're looking at the exogen aren't great, but the differences in speed and in general, how does it perform and that it's prepped for more and more uh, systems and players uh, and for the future. But we needed to uh, get rid of the old uh, communication and rendering engine and to, to exchange almost everything that was uh, under the hood. So that was exceptionally good job done mainly by Cyborg, our main coder for Exogen. And uh, that, that was a lot of uh, work being team. done. And his team also spoke of was, was on it, working <laughs> and solving a lot of different issues. But uh, I know that it doesn't look... Uh, like a lot of different changes in graphics, but the main thing is that we need to keep healthy uh, fundament of the of the system. And <laughs> as I'm yeah. always mentioning that, that was supposed to be an interactive map, not a game. So <laughs> adding a lot yeah. of different features in the beginning. <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of crazy to think about, but it is it is fun like to see these big changes because like even though the surface doesn't change, everything underneath is. A great big difference it's like trying to come up with the exact same recipe but you know improve it make it more simplistic you know simplify the process it um, doesn't simplify believe it, me <laughs> it's way more complicated well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay i can i can i can probably see that um so i mean that is exciting you know uh, not that i want to get on too much of a tangent even though i always want to get on a bit of a tangent but you mentioned you know graphics updates what do we when we talk about that around the office like when that just like gets thought about what are we what are we thinking like is are we doing a big jump up is it just like you know more sprites you know just different operations or are you thinking about more complicated graphic systems like i mean like are the, we talking about like 3d or the things that you are clicking in exogen this is just a skin for the server side and server side is the most important part of the project because it needs to be healthy. We can always add some bells and whistles, additional graphics, animations, etc., uh, to make it more eye candy. But this is exactly the same thing with board games. Board game should be good when uh, when it comes down to the to the rules that are that are making it interesting. Besides of that, yeah. all other things like illustrations, uh, etc., those are extras. Those should be looking okay. But if you are making a board game, you are starting with uh, fundamental things. What kind of a mechanics? You are trying to balance it. You are playtesting it, etc. All other things you are just adding afterwards. So Exogen is uh, still a work in progress. It's a better version still. And we are going to, to continue uh, our works on it. We've got a couple of different bugs that showed up just after this, this update. And we need to get rid of it. You guys are already on it. But uh, don't suppose that you will see like uh, the, the finished version of Exogen anytime soon. It will be growing with new functionality, as we'll be also covering it today with, uh, with the subject of Megacorps, etc. But uh, it's going to grow. And... It, it will have some problems as it's pretty much a bit chaotic. Some, some growing pains. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> growing pains, exactly. But we are trying to react fast. You see that we are online and we are trying to get rid of those uh, bugs. Just remember that this is uh, something that you are getting for free. <laughs> And it isn't that we are doing it after hours. It's a part of uh, of our daytime jobs for the coders that we need to pay for, etc. So, so all of those things uh, are costing us. So, I would love to have like thirty guys working on this project and to to solve all kind of issues uh, overnight. But it won't happen anytime soon. So just bear with us. It will take some time to, to yeah. get to the stable version. And stable version won't be stable for, for a long time because we are going to add more feature, features that will add more bugs. And we're super happy that everybody wants to expand, to explore the, the universe, to, to see what's, what's further and further uh, behind uh, the, the, the next frontier. But it's always a race between, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, giving giving you, you the huge universe and uh, making it responsible and uh, responsive yeah uh, and yeah fast uh, fast working 
Yeah. Well, I mean, the so that there's a been a programming update. I mean, that we're just talking about where the speed has greatly improved. In fact, actually, now that you were talking about the expansion, I just realized that I need to jump back in and try to see if I can start building a new lunar base because I've been working on a small <laughs> expansion project down south. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's going a lot faster. And then, you know, we've I was trying to mention this earlier. So with the Mars thing, we're trying a new branching system where, you know, much like the voting system in Colonies, the board game, there's a lot of factors that can go into the outcomes of events like, you know, the colonists voting for decrees, right? So my question is, um, where do you guys, like Max, let's chat a little bit just about how you see all this kind of playing out, because right now we've got a lot of neat options for players to continue to um, not, I don't want to say choose your own adventure, but it feels a bit like that, you know what I mean? Like, as, as these different pieces of the puzzle are going to fall out with, like, branching choices you know people can choose to mar go to mars people won't and i feel like that's going to open up a lot of opportunities for either seeing different sides of the same story or having different options Casey, like you know in future oh, you know what, that what? you know that i cannot spoil the surprise but yes everything is being sought in a in a database and a whole system that looks pretty much not fancy but very simple from your point of view guys uh it's it's prepared to be a part of something way bigger in the future. So first of all, baby steps, we are testing it. Uh, as the, the um, Arya Bakshi uh, news uh, about her death was with a, one simple question, if you will donate uh, licenses to the newly funded foundation with her name, uh, that was pretty much a test if if it works or not, and we got very good feedback. So we've uh, fixed a couple of different graphical user and interface and uh, related things uh, in the second question that we've asked lately. But yes, those are building a structure that pretty much will be growing like a tree, and some of those questions won't be showing up for some of the players that have uh, chosen different way of the uh, corp yeah so that's something that if you will answer the question that is being asked on exogen it will be affecting your uh, corporation always it will stay yeah, with that's you. really that's i i wonder how many people are gonna spend you know unnecessary minutes like tossing back and forth like oh god do i do this or not like trying to think ahead like okay what's been happening in the news recently like Who's going to say what about this? I don't know. I feel like this will be just one more thing that's going to add fun, frustration <laughs> to different choices. I hope that's um, mainly fun. It's only <laughs> mainly fun. licenses, but uh, it's at the same time uh, uh, quite quite a lot, uh, especially yeah, I, if you're a new player. I mean, if, if, yeah, if you're a new player or if you're somebody who's just constantly pumping out production of you know yeah. ships vessels missions like i i unfortunately you know i had a specific goal i wanted to you know i wanted to stake my claim i wanted my own little region and then i wanted to build up from there so i i've got a bit of a backlog that needs to get through but um <laughs> um sean's always got a great little gift for us um <laughs> sorry okay um all right let me let me break from that let's start getting into our questions so I had a fun one right off uh, again from Sean Sniper on Discord. He was saying, um, "Has anybody taken time to make uh, Beyond Humanity Colonies a drinking game? Like add a drinking game to it um, while being played? And if yes, you know, tell us a little bit more about that story. And if not, why not? So, Max Blosky, any thoughts? So drinking why not? Games? Why not? Question is." Uh has a simple answer because alcohol conducts electricity so <laughs> <laughs> and yeah and being, being uh, under influence of the alcohol allow, like makes makes it possible more possible to to no uh, make a short circuit yeah uh, i mean i know i know so many people who you know refuse drinks on the table some even go so far as like no food on the table or eating while you're playing games and that and that's just cardboard that's just like paper cardboard games like yeah starting at electronics to it, it gets a little bit crazy those tabletop uh, prepared tables 
have uh, the the sockets outside of the table to to store your yeah uh, your uh, drinks that's, and that's a very food. clever thing yeah yeah those are one, those are ones are pretty fun of course you need some big crazy straws you like you can have you can have a drink at the table you just can't touch it you have to have a yeah. straw that that seems like a fair compromise yeah very long straw that will be coming from chick, uh, from kitchen yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> <Which> will, <laughs> but but from case, the floor. <laughs> yeah but Casey uh the beer was involved somehow in the BHC creation because uh we've started oh, just in the beginning yeah in 2014 and beer was uh something that was with us with me and uh, Bloski with Pavel Suski on uh on a trip where the the idea for Not the only BHC a few other people yeah 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 but uh we haven't I uh, thought about a drinking game lately. We we've got no time to drink for last like I don't know eighteen <laughs> months or so <laughs> because of this. Oh project, really? So. Oh, you guys, you guys aren't trying hard enough. Oh, we, we are. Never time. mind. <laughs> I think we do have time for drinking, but we don't have time for hangovers. <laughs> oh yeah. well, I well okay. There's a difference <laughs> between having a drink and yeah. drinking to hangovers. Uh, okay. <laughs> There okay, so okay, how so to, how to turn uh, how to adapt alcohol into into the game? For instance, the Terran goods uh, are the crates that uh, uh, store alcohol and other fun stuff inside. So every time you take a Terran goods, you gain a Terran good. You can just uh, have a beer or drink a shot. <laughs> now, is it is it just when you get one, or is it when when anybody gets a Terran good? It's a house rule, so it depends on <laughs> depends on depends team. on the experience of the players. Yeah, yeah. depends yeah, on who's involved. We need to add some kind of a special mode for the game itself, uh, like uh, up to five rounds only. Otherwise, people will w- yeah. won't be able to finish the game. <laughs> or maybe we should add some uh, some extra artifacts uh, related with uh, with alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, when you when you find one and uh, you know. The, House to, rules, ma- yeah, yeah. Manage to do it. You just have a beer from from the fridge. <laughs> you know, another another way you could do it. I think it's probably a little bit more responsible. Whenever a red decree gets passed, everybody takes a shot, or maybe just like <laughs> takes. I don't know, drinks a beer. I don't know something that that could that could slow things down a little bit where it's not too crazy. Yeah. Um, okay. All if, right. If those um, games could could even be ended. Because you know, oh, after actually few shots, you you might not be able to. It'd be mm-hmm. it'd be really interesting to, to have like a little modifier, like after like you f- finish or don't finish the game, like colonize or fail. You know, were you drinking during this game? So we get some more statistics on that. Yeah, if you <laughs> maybe, do, maybe it might affect things. When you guys get get the games and you and you do a drinking game out of BHC, just send us the videos. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm well, I, honestly I can't think of anything more fun. All I want to do is just like see people posting about like games they've played, either you know write ups or videos or just like little Instagram posts. Like that's gonna be, oh don't, my god, what a relief that's gonna be. Do, don't do that. <laughs> we we want to see beautiful unboxing videos with happy faces, not drunk. I can, didn't say yeah. post them. On, <laughs> well, I didn't say to post them online, just to send them to us. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so we have all the fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, we'll, we'll we'll appreciate it. The internet doesn't need it; we need it. Um, okay, obviously we got big we got big questions about you know mold production. Uh, Max Blosky, you guys got any uh, information for us on molds? I know that was like a a big thing on our last AMA. Anything anything new to report? Uh, tons of papers, for instance, <laughs> that that goes through our hands. Yeah. <laughs> News are good. The the, the things with uh, with injections uh, are sold. So right now we are just pretty much running production full time. This is huge difference in between previous process and current process. I'm super happy that our partners uh, keeping us updated way to 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 detailed emails i mean like getting <laughs> getting over 100 pages of uh, documentation isn't something that i love i may say because that means that i need to go into details and learn everything oh God, about yeah, yeah. And you have to read it before you sign it of course so yes a lot 
and usually you are getting like an updated copy before you will get to the end of the previous one like the, the, oh we found a couple of different things that we may improve it all over here as well so yeah thanks got we've got lucas our uh, main engineer in our company that is taking care over it and right now he's just keeping me updated and that's saving me a lot of time uh yeah we are fully updated uh up, up to date with uh, all of those things that we need to uh, to do with uh with injection molding so yeah we are looking at uh, march delivery uh, and all of those bits and pieces that were problematic uh, that's almost two thirds of the uh, of the batch uh, are pretty much solved with electrodes so yeah vaporizing lead the way <laughs> it's you know it's really interesting when you first told me about it like obviously that one day between us getting the news and releasing the news was horrifically stressful but in the evening um after we wrote up the update i was doing a lot of research on just the actual process and man it was that was cool as hell like that was really amazing i don't know if you guys watched it we put an update out there on kickstarter i don't does is everybody getting the kickstarter updates we've we've had a few people mention that they weren't getting emails from kickstarter i don't know let us know like throw it in the chat if it's a yes or a no but we're definitely summarizing tons of information uh and uh, and trying to get it out there oh you know and that's a great point you know late backers don't get those emails we might need to figure out a way to i don't know add those guys to the to the mailchimp to the mass mailings um at any rate yeah no so if you if you can go back to the uh kickstarter update page we uh we put in there some videos that link out to some different like processes or explanations of the edm process right is that right max yeah 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 okay. so that's vaporizing yeah. with uh, electrodes so that that's way more precise uh than, it's, it's not uh, it's not like a molecule at a time but it's it's pretty small <laughs> right like each each pulse uh, i mean cnc isn't uh, regular machines drilling machines cnc machines aren't yeah i mean that's of Cutting keeping up with time yeah so the the same technology is being used for example for uh smartphone enclosures when you are building molds for it so <laughs> it's awesome it provides exceptionally good quality in steel but the <laughs> two major issues with it is extremely time consuming and it's so freaking exp i don't want to swear too much so i will just say that it's extremely expensive so yeah, our costs are going way up high and it isn't good for us, but still we we are going to deliver something that we've promised and uh, the quality of the modules is extremely important for us. I know that those minis that you, you are holding in your hands when you are receiving uh, good and interesting or maybe just good games with good minis because that's one of the <laughs> issues with Kickstarter. Uh, that the quality of minis is extremely important. We are using different processes. This is way closer to to, uh, to production processes for the uh, toys and electronics equipment, because we aren't using just a resin and we aren't using flexible uh, molds. This is those things are way more expensive when you are doing those in steel and you are using. Uh, much higher pressure and you aren't using just resin we are using ABS and polycarbonate so those are completely different materials but the final outcome is the most important thing quality matters so we couldn't do anything on a lower level than our own assumptions <laughs> and those are really yeah. high <laughs> and there's the technology that the exogen probes are built in <laughs> yeah you know it's, it's that's why they fly it's so, funny they fly I, so 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 long uh, long distances because <laughs> <laughs> just put together well you know it's funny i never thought that it would be that bad to have you know cnc machine bits but just recently like since that since we got that news since we got that update um i was i was taking a look at just a lot of like the you know the injected mold parts around my house from all kinds of different things you know just different products and I was noticing, okay, yeah, these are definitely <laughs> some <laughs> level of fucked up. Like I, I was like, you know, when you don't think about it, when it's not, when it's nothing important that you kind of like stare at and like look at and, you know, needs to be assembled in special ways. Like 
if it looks like crap and like all the seams don't match up and it doesn't really matter. But the more, the more we've gotten into the weeds on this one, the more I've kind of realized like, Oh wow, there's like a big step up between the CNC process and other options. Yeah, Casey, if you want to, if you want to build uh, the, the whole mesh, the whole net of the colony. So then every, every bit uh, has to, hold the, the dimension. Yeah, yeah. Th th this is exactly what what Pavel uh, just mentioned. Remember that those aren't just regular minis. So we need to, each one of those modules is being made from at least three different pieces. Those are just enclosures for the electronics yeah. inside. And everything needs to be fitted perfectly. Otherwise, you won't be able to, to close the corridor on the, or eventually the material will be stressed with uh, pressure in between different bent parts, etc. So uh, all kinds of uh, solutions that uh, are being used usually with uh, regular minis uh, creation, they, they haven't got a place. Uh, there's no room for improvement in this case. We need to be perfect. Otherwise, uh, things will be breaking. Those won't be fitted uh, perfectly, etc. So that's that's why it's so important, especially that you are building a mini out of the mini. So that's a diorama, as Pavel mentioned. So the yeah. angles uh, a real a real Voltron of board games. Mm. Our current, <laughs> uh, current better version. If you want to uh, uh, join uh, join, I don't know what was the the actual module. I think it was the warehouse. Uh, then it it's like it's not laying flat. It's made out of uh, you know the printing. Uh, it was printed. Oh, the three D printed 3D. modules. Yeah, yeah. so it just uh, bended a little bit, so it doesn't oh, it doesn't man. go flat can, on the on the table. So it just it can you know oh, just disconnect can, sometimes. Can, can I can I admit something? Hmm? I I recently I was recently playing putting together the original. 3D printed version of the game that you shipped me, mm -hmm. and I finally broke a connector. Because <laughs> <laughs> the the original 3D printed parts, they, they something was weird with the curing, and some of the connectors kind of flared out a bit. Um, and and I wasn't paying attention. I grabbed one of the ones that was a bit flared, and I forced it down. And I, I snapped the side of the the plastic, and I was Don't so mad because I've gone in the 3D I've, printer era. We can just send you a. 3D model and you can just print <laughs> out. So, well, <laughs> not, play not, not, <laughs> not, not <laughs> to brag, <laughs> but for my, my, my birthday, I, I got myself a 3D printer and after months it finally showed up. So now just send me, send me the STLs. I'll print my own corridor. Yeah. I mean, yeah. print, print and solder <laughs> board game. <laughs> That's a new oh, thing well, on the market. <laughs> Oh jeez, that would be tough. But you know what? Oh man, like that does you know that's an interesting that's an interesting option as you know three D printers get better. Like, how much do you charge somebody for a board game if they can just print their own minis? Like, obviously, it's not going to be everybody. Uh, it it isn't something uh, very how simple. Much, remember, how much are, the the idea is this is this is like well. a wait? Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I I say that uh, how I, I just continued how much the idea itself is worth. So because you <laughs> oh, don't yeah. sell plastics, if someone can print it out, so he's just paying for the idea. <clears throat> I I mean, oh. yeah, the, the, Sean is uh, mentioning Revelation Skirmish and also our friend from Poland, uh, Tomek Bar, uh, lately published the Star Scrappers game in which you are getting uh, STLs, uh, so far as I remember, uh, for, to, to print your own minis or something like that so yeah th those are things that you can do but uh in in our case that's uh you've got so many different parts that you need to to get those uh, fitted properly you've got electronics inside so in this case uh the resin doesn't work uh so even electronics need to be perfectly fitted uh, inside of a enclosure to so you you'll have a connector lined up with a uh, enclosure that is closing the the this the this rectangle um, around the, the the socket yeah otherwise you won't be able to close the uh, corridor on it and yeah resin uh, usually with time with uh, with moisture and especially with temperature it's changing the shape so uh, with ABS and polycarbon, we, we've got no problem with that. And that's like, extremely like important. F yeah, okay, yeah. So you will print a new one. <laughs> but imagine if you had... Just, uh, if good, you had just going to have to make it with really loose VHC tolerances. Game with, 
with engraved logo of your Exogen Corporation on it. Mm. I mean, we'll get back oh. to this idea in the future, I think, because we haven't, uh, we didn't got our final stretch goal and we've got a couple of crazy ideas for uh, something that we could do extra for our backers uh, in the future. But still, first of all, delivery, that's something that we need to do as fast as possible. And afterwards, we'll be thinking about a couple of different extras as well that we would like mm -hmm. to, to provide. Yeah, no, I mean, there's oh man, God, so much, so much to consider out there, but um, I do, just don't want to promise, uh, over promise anything. First of all, delivery. Afterwards, uh, the crazy idea uh, bucket will open, <laughs> will start shooting different crazy ideas. Okay, well, I mean, talking about production and delivery, um, I mean, obviously, a big part of that, of finishing the game is like NFC production and like incorporating NFC into the game. Like that's obviously a big thing. I think that's probably one of the kind of like silent heroes of colonies allowing it to play like a board game. You know, it keeps people from having to do math. The computer can kind of do everything and just, you know, display the raw numbers or not the raw numbers, but like the process numbers. Like, can you guys talk a little bit about, you know, just like, prototyping the game with nfc like how that idea came around like how that process ended up working and like how's the manufacturing been going because that's been kind of a crazy thing over over the COVID season the most important things that uh, i remember uh, was uh, when we were playing uh, when we first used the the nfc cards uh, i think uh -huh. it was in uh, in back in alpha version uh, we switched from the computer app or uh, that we were using on the laptop to to the real NFC uh, stickers and uh, and the NFC reader and it was a huge oh. relief. Oh uh, yeah, you know, I remember this cuz the first time I ever saw the game it was still like, you know, the the acrylic and the circuit board minis like there was there was no yeah, like like sandwich, there was no yeah. minis. Yeah. And the cards themselves all had numbers on them and the only yes. way to get it to work was for Max to run the computer program through like mm -hmm. a raspberry pi i think it was and like type no, in yeah. the number it was i'm no I'm, uh, I'm talking about the situation when we had the app on the laptop and we were um, mm -hmm. manually uh putting the numbers uh, inside, yeah, yeah. inside the application yeah yeah uh, yeah case yeah, you remember, no, remember the we were using this version in 2018 18. yeah yeah exactly yeah at, at during gen, at gen, gen yeah which was which was a really crazy experience like that was my first in introduction to like the board game industry and like hobby and stuff i was like you guys were like hey can you come with us to like this board game convention i was like yeah sure i was like convention of people <laughs> playing monopoly that seems weird and it was just this amazing like eye-opening experience but then we're also sitting there trying to be like <laughs> be like Hi, total stranger. Will you come over to my rented house and come play board games with me? And people were like, <laughs> hell yeah. When can I get there? When can I show up? I was like, oh, okay, that's just not the response I was expecting. Yeah, serial <laughs> killers would have a fine experience in this society and community. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, well, I mean, so. that that's that's that is a huge jump. I remember that like it made it so much better. But like Blosky, like where where are we at on NFC right now? Like, what's the new news about NFC? Uh, yeah, it's in, a, it's in like, production. All the printing, uh, all every, I uh, all the all the cards NFC cards are uh, accepted. All the all the um, language versions. So. Mm -hmm. They're being produced in uh, Italy, am I right, Max? Yeah, correct. So, I thought it was, yeah. yeah. The, 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 the thing, I, I know exactly that they're, uh, that they're in production because I also had my documents to, to write, uh, to sign, uh, because every, every card had to, be, had to be signed by me. So, so they... Each, each card? Production. Responsibility, yes, yeah. Because I had a PDF with fronts and backs on each page, so I had mm. to sign them up. So it was like uh, we have 108 cards, as I remember. Yeah, um, with NFC. 
something like that and in five language versions so that was a lot a, a lot <laughs> a lot of papers to sign up <laughs> and also those have got uh, correlated code that is uh, just for one card yeah so thanks to that uh, our game knows what kind of a card is being used <laughs> so Pavel was yeah. also checking this this part as well <laughs> the, the, yeah. this was a lot of data to process it's, it's a lot oh of, my god well, of, I, uh, I, I remember going through all the DTP stuff yeah go uh, sorry go ahead it's a lot of control <laughs> tab using on my uh, on my keyboard <laughs> just oh, you know switching between uh, pdfs and comparing them in <laughs> at least you've got version. three monitors yeah so that's you know way simpler for you <laughs> <laughs> but you've got only oh, two gosh. eyes <laughs> so yeah they're in production uh, i think a, a lot of them um, any 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 weird stories to go along with the NFC stuff? I mean, I uh, obviously signing off for how many how many individual pieces is that? I mean, we're talking about what a hundred and uh, uh, how many if, with how someone, cards if have bought, NFC? If if you bought uh, uh, the add-on with the, with the booster the cards, pack, yeah, uh, it's mm -hmm. hundred and eight cards uh, NFC cards inside because it's 60, 60 basic uh, decrees plus. 48 yeah. in uh, in addition yeah, booster yeah uh, so that alone is uh, is 108 and apart from that you have the uh, directives you have uh, the NFC tokens and so that's well, you nine have the goals. plus nine um, you have the do you, do you have all the goal cards yeah token. abilities abilities but those are like without a, NFC, so that's separate. Well, those are I, yeah. Now, now I'm just wondering, like you know, with language versions, how many different individual printed pieces are there? My God, uh, <laughs> almost 200 per box uh, per one language version. So altogether, that's giving us around thousand different pieces. Yeah, one thing I'm Holy sure shit. too much for my for my brain alone. <laughs> maybe so, maybe we'll get you an assistant next time <laughs> so as you as you know Casey, you, know, you were checking them we were checking them <laughs> so oh everybody God. was took, checking if everything's all right so i'm just praying yeah. for for i i know there's there will be some a little some little mistakes but i'm just hoping that there won't, won't be much so <laughs> maybe the maybe they'll turn into those beautiful mistakes that are worth millions of dollars. They'll be like, here, well, maybe, here I have maybe. a first a first printing of Beyond Humanity <laughs> Colonies where there's two L's in colonies or something how, like that. How much will be the alpha version worth? Oh my god, endless! <laughs> like I'm not I'm not getting rid of them. I've got them stored away as tight as I can. I, if I can get a <laughs> safe, I'll put them in the safe. I just pasted um, on Discord the the one of the. Uh, pages that just that one got. one page. Yeah. Oh my god! What a nightmare. <laughs> I and don't this, know. Now does this does this also have the um, does this also have the NFC like code on it or anything or? I uh, know that th those were yeah, but also uh, we've been using uh, yeah, that's encoding section that you've got over there. Man, it's so neat. Oh jeez, mm. and you have to sign each one. I hope I hope you just had like a, a PNG that you could use to. To just copy paste onto it, or uh, just or were you remember, just way copying it the whole thing. Casey, one yeah, mistake, and the whole production is because the, this this is automated. So the the human being is needed to program the machine that is pretty much uh, finishing the production of a card and uh, programming it and testing it, B because mm -hmm. afterwards those are being. Uh, closed in uh, in vacuum seal uh, as a package, so that's extremely important to, to have everything uh, double checked before this will be uh, vacuum sealed. Oh my god, it's so it's so Thanks, crazy. John. And just to th <laughs> and just to th <laughs> for your comment <laughs> and, and just to think like you know 200 200 is a lot of things to sign off but every time we're like hey, you know and we'll do a french version and we'll do a german version the problem like the problem when you uh, when you're signing multiplies. something is that you have to check it <laughs> so that's that's a lot of a lot of control tabs and you know going to the next page and checking with your uh, you know with your documents if it's all right if oh. it's the right number <laughs> and uh, oh, yeah, in, the, yeah. in the middle we have we have we while uh, dividing the uh, the decrease into two, um, not dividing, like accepting the div div uh, division be between two decks. 
uh, we change the numbers so you know it's a lot of a lot of stuff to to check uh, to be sure that everything is all right and in good amounts uh, and so yeah the, the dividing process was <laughs> interesting as well to find proper balance uh, in between everything that you need to have proper uh, mechanics and functionalities uh, the, available the division on. was was um, from the beginning was was something obvious but we had to close it uh, yeah we had to yeah make few few decisions that that we we had to dig into the the balance of the game and this is something that we cannot post to anyone otherwise people would start power power playing power gaming the 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 decree cards uh, that they will have in their hands because those aren't equal to one to, to another it's a part of a random because you are getting those randomly from the from the deck but still those that you are getting in your hand those have got different fun functions and those aren't spread equally uh, through the deck i'm taking over sorry i'm talking about balancing and that doesn't make any sense we've got no <laughs> questions about it <laughs> <laughs> we, we we you know we have in the past i mean i guess if you want to if you want to throw it back yeah that's i mean I i'm still i'm still uh happy about the final outcome because we wanted to create a living deck so those decrees should have a story behind them yeah so as you will those should be used also as a tool for the rpg light element that you will have above your table and that was extremely important for me because otherwise i think that uh, the game won't have this special type of uh I, how to call it it won't be attractive from my point of view, yeah? So the very best yeah. game from my point of view is uh, Ameritrash that has got a strong uh, fundamental uh, Euro uh, element uh, in the mechanics. So it should look like Ameritrash, but at the same time, it should work like Euro type of a game, yeah? So yeah, yeah that, no, that, that makes sense. That, that was a lot of work and Pavel to help you, um, to thank you and helping you, that was something <laughs> Above my pay grade, I may say. <laughs> I was just looking at uh, at you that you are just constantly going back and forth through the list, and I'm I'm proud of you. You thank you. <laughs> and going um, back to those NFCs, uh, you were asking if I have a story behind it. Um, yeah, I have one because I needed to. We were creating the you know those alpha and beta versions, so I needed mm -hmm. to buy NFC stickers, and it was like. 400 at a time so uh, oh nobody God. at the customs wanted to believe me that i'm uh, buying it for myself <laughs> so i had to pay taxes for it because they said that oh. I, that i uh, that i was buying it for you know selling them uh, on the market yeah that, that <laughs> oh, was super early wow that was super <laughs> yeah. early on before we've got com company set up etc that was way even, before kickstarter even, that, even though i was buying been, them that had to on... be yeah that had to be between the two gen cons yeah, so, so, somewhere oh, around it, yeah. We were changing oh, the card, so it happened like two or three times. So that's why they didn't believe me that I'm not, you know, <laughs> selling them. <laughs> okay, we well, here, some... um, we've got we've, we've got a question, Max, that kind of goes back to what you were touching on before about balancing. Like, um, Ajax Random in the, in the chat was just asking, you know, what would prevent somebody, I think, what would prevent somebody from stacking the decks for more favorable outcomes? Or perhaps um how would somebody stack the decks for more favorable outcomes because i mean that's a bit hard because because like p anybody can grab decrees at any any action in their in their round right yes but doesn't make any sense i know that uh, if you would like to do this just do it but it doesn't make any sense because you are just getting rid of the uh, of, of the fun that that you will have in front of you i know that you won't be doing it but uh ajax i know that this isn't about you but it doesn't make any sense it's like playing solo a board game in which we are constantly uh Jeez. using trainer mode <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so we are just. Well, you know, it's, uh, oh, it be, it I I didn't lost this card. I will take it back. Yeah, you can you, do it. You in know, any what, game. I think it's, it's just a matter of time of uh, what, uh, how honest you want to play the game. Yeah, sure. Well, but but the thing is, is like I I've definitely played with people where I don't want them to shuffle if we're playing poker, uh, just because 
I feel like they might try to do something. But that's a game where you know what card's going to go where, at least, you know, during the initial dealing. You know, with colonies, like, anybody can grab cards any time. So you could let somebody fool around, think they're clever, and try to stack the deck. But it's not going to go the way they think it's going to. But Ajax is continuing in, uh, continuing in very uh, interesting direction. So he's asking uh, somebody that would like to, to colonize Nightmare as a first uh, first uh, guy ever Nightmare planet yeah so yeah maybe I don't think I've seen one is uh, I, know, I know there's a couple out there but I I haven't seen one in my exigen search I mean you've got one very close to Sol yeah sure but we are pushing constantly people towards this direction that rankings uh, ranking shouldn't be a part of it we don't want to create a multiplayer game in which you will try to be first otherwise you won't have uh, any kind of a joy or you won't have fun with the with the game the the major thing behind the multiplayer um, component uh, and exogen and everything else is to create a living galaxy is to create a living ecosystem full of different players that are also a part of this uh, space society of this community of corporations trying to 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 overcome those uh, obstacles uh, on different planets. I know that a lot of different players are uh, <laughs> trying to be first on the frontier, etc. But uh, still, uh, it's something that we cannot uh, secure the game against this kind of a mechanism. The, the computer games and video games, those have got a lot of different problems with hackers that are constantly using aimbots uh, in shooters, etc. But uh, in a board uh, game, yeah. you, there's no way to, 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 to have a security option that could, I don't know, uh, electri electrify or use an electric shock from, the, from an arc when you will be trying to <laughs> use a IDDQD code on an arc. Yeah? So yeah, in this case, it's up to you what, what you are going to do with, uh, with your game. You may be strict and honest with yourself and play solo as it should be played or eventually you may just throw uh, cards on the table choose uh, those that will work just for you in this particular moment but you will be bored with this game very very fast yeah i I, th I think i think half the fun is i i play games where i lose thanks to the people around me not me necessarily and actually, to be fair, I think those are the most interesting games. If you're thinking about what's actually happening in the colonies, um, it you know it sucks to not win, but at the same time, not winning is pretty entertaining. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I was so surprised seeing our testers that they've got a lot of fun, especially that you are feeling that you are winning. Usually, then uh, in those situations when you are really close to losing, and that means something. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. No, those are when you can kind of like pull it through and just eke out that victory right at the end. Yes. And, that's really, and you that's are feeling really that you, you've done something to, 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 to make it happen. That your actions, not uh, bl uh, that you are creating a strategy and reacting to the, to the things that are happening on a table inside, inside of an app, etc. And finally, you're overcoming the obstacles. And this is something that we were aiming from the very big beginning to create uh, an environment in which, like a sandbox, more or less, but with strict rock solid rules in which you are moving back, back and forth, trying to find your way towards, uh, first of all, not losing the game with everybody, like uh, in semi-co-op when <laughs> people will be playing against each other and the colony will just collapse, or eventually win by yourself, yeah? Yeah. And well, you know, about it's... The, if oh. I may something, something more. Yeah, uh, Thinking please. about this problem is uh, rather, um, I don't know, uh, surprising for me because it means that uh, the uh, tabletop game is uh, an add-on to the exogen <laughs> because <laughs> if you know what i mean <laughs> no <laughs> yeah because uh, we <laughs> it was to be as max said in the beginning and as we repeat repeatedly tell people it was to be uh, just a map and now it's a game uh, and all the, those questions i think will be solved when when you get the, the tabletop game, because uh, now you have all the fun you have is out from Exogen, and that's where that's where you you play. But uh, when you have the the colonies, uh, 
it will balance itself so I think it will be uh, fun enough not to think about just uh, pushing uh, pushing your wi wins in the game uh, just to solve some exogen uh, problems that you have with uh, expansion and so on this will I also think so. great yeah <laughs> Casey no go, go go ahead I was just gonna say something this will also greatly affect how people will be playing exogen i assume because right now this is something uh virtually touching virtual uh, beings in a virtual world but finally when you will be facing your colony that you've built on your table and you've spent two hours with your friends and this is your yeah. huge success because this uh this difficult planet uh bent uh, according to to your will this is kind of a success that won't be uh, in front of you just for 15 minutes when you are taking selfies with, with, the, with the colony on, on the table. It will stay with you in exogen. And this is something like, like a milestone for your corporation. This is something that uh, should create a history of your corporation. Uh, th this is a mark that you are living in a living environment of the exogen uh, ecosystem. And that was something that we want to introduce to the to the players and see because nobody before us, I think, have done such a thing and to see how this thing will be evolving with you guys, because we'll be still over here and we are going to probably to make uh, new games, uh, think of uh, new features for the uh, for Exogen. As as you see, we are reacting to the to the feedback and uh, uh and ideas that we are getting from you yeah we're doing something new so i think the the answer is going to surprise even us yeah it, like yeah that's true it happened already before <laughs> <laughs> well i mean look at where we're at now yeah i mean i think that's a great point i think it's really important for you know you guys out there the players to uh, make use of the exogen suggestion channels like this is fully a work in progress. It's kind of evolving as we go along. Um, and, you know, we want to continue to incorporate Exogen as, you know, kind of like the backbone, the connector of all future games to all other games. Um, so that integration is going to be really interesting. It's going to bring a lot of new, you know, features and ideas. Can but, you know, see. whenever you're... Well, oh, what? Am I not supposed, am I not supposed uh, to say that? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, I'm just look, looking at the timer. At the same time, we are on the very first Ouch, page shit. and we've got six <laughs> other pages full oh of questions. God. And the main oh subject God. was okay. supposed to be Megacorps. <laughs> we haven't okay, even okay. touched oh, it. Oh. <laughs> Wow, we really, I might have to go back and see if I can edit that beginning. Don't worry, we that's will have some questions for the next AMA. Okay, so. all right, all right. Well, <laughs> here, let's let's do this. Okay, so here, we'll move on from that one. Um, we had a question come through that was a really good one. You know, what changes could we expect with future versions of colonies? Um, you know, that's a, that's a really interesting one because obviously we've got the we've got the production stuff solved. So doing additional versions of colonies in the future is going to be very easy. It's going to be significantly cheaper. Thank God. Um, it'd be nice to have some actual profits as a company. Um, Yay! but the thing is, <laughs> but you know, like we didn't hold anything back. Uh, I know there's a lot of, a lot of history in the board game community for, you know, people taking the game and then chopping it up. And, you know, half of the game is the game you purchase. Half of the game is, you know, stretch goals. And then, you know, maybe there's another percentage that's some sort of like second version, third version, whatever. Um, add -ons. But yeah, add ons. But, you know, Blowski Max, it sounds from all the conversations I had, it sounds like the idea you had, like your idea, like what's the best game? Like what would be the most fun? Like what's what's the perfect game for me? It seems like that is colonies. It doesn't seem like anything was held back. Like it's just kind of all in. So, I mean, it, to me, it feels like any future version, you know, maybe we can figure out some things to, you know, improve or add to the gameplay in some way. But I feel like mostly it'll just be trying to expand the player base, you know, to, you know, find a wider audience. But I don't know, maybe you guys have some different thoughts on that. My answer is always a huge Cthulhu uh, figure in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> are you, I just, are you talking about that two foot one that Simon's doing now? Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just saw that. Oh my God. Well, if that doesn't make you want to buy a board game, I don't know what does. <laughs> uh, no, we have, um, we have some ideas uh, for, for the expansions. Uh, it just, uh, during the campaign, we 
changed few few things and we developed the the, the game and we balanced it uh, so <clears throat> it's more or less because uh, such huge game cannot be fully balanced but we we uh, balanced the game so we have some ideas for the expansions but uh, they will be they will have to be uh, you know thought over uh, not to mm -hmm. not to break this balance and to blend in um, into the into the basic game. And it's well, hopefully we we have some time off to do that. It, still, it's uh, it's not a work in progress. That's an idea, because first of all, yeah. we, we need to deliver the game. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm su I'm super happy about that that we haven't cut anything from the box. I know that it was something that. Maybe looking at the business side of, the, of our venture, we should do like to cut it into pieces and uh, to to uh, to deliver the game uh, to Kickstarter. That would be uh, way more affordable in terms of uh, like a basic core box. But in our case, core box equals the full experience that we wanted to deliver to to, to everybody. As even with those uh, with this booster pack with additional uh, cards, those are just affecting the visuals and uh, more or less uh, you are getting new illustration, new text, new, new fluff, and a couple of different things. But uh, that isn't something, and we've been always strict and honest about it that you must have to have full experience. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm super happy that we haven't cut anything from it. Uh, a couple of different guys were almost laughing from us <laughs> because we've been going against the, the standards of the Kickstarter market. But uh, we weren't doing anything according to the standards till this moment. So yeah, why you should know, we? Standards. Yeah, no standards can change. We we can be we can be the the voice of reason. We can be the power that influences others. I like, mean, why not? We we won't be a voice of reason. The voice of reason are customers, are buggers. And I want to deliver the game not to make money on it uh, during the first uh, campaign. The most important thing that we are aiming at, and we've been super strict and honest always with our buggers, that this is the start of our company. So we need to deliver beautiful game. I mean, that will have uh, yeah. good looks, uh, exceptionally good gameplay, uh, that, that, uh, that it will be providing a lot of fun. Uh, so yeah, th that's something that uh, we need and to achieve. And a small right revolution now. in the in the backstory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Well, I mean, talking about developments and stuff. Um, as we think about like a next version, what are you guys' thoughts on extra characters? Bloski, I know you were talking about. You know, obviously we have to balance things, and I know during the campaign we had one unlikely stretch goal for somebody to become a character, which I still think, as the game progresses, is an incredible value. We should continue to do that. If anybody listening is just like, you know what, maybe I should be a colony manager for the rest of my life, like remembered throughout history as somebody helping to. <laughs> colonized planets I, I think it's a great value Ten thousand, a drop in the bucket for global infamy um mm -hmm. but have you guys been putting any thoughts into like additional characters i think uh, these characters that uh, are currently in the game are uh, blended in the in the balance uh, they they have their sections of the of the gameplay that they can collect the victory points because that's mostly what was the game is about the collecting victory points through different channels right if we uh, yeah. if we develop uh, the game uh, if we develop some add-ons to the game and we open other channels to to you know, gain uh, gain the v vps then we will have uh, an area to uh, give some more managers uh, i think this this amount was uh, no natural for the for everything that's inside the game so i think the next managers uh, should show up when there will be other rules other ways to to gain victory points and and, uh, and a way to not destroy existing balance that we've got already <laughs> yeah sure yeah 
Always the uh, hard part. But but at the same time, we've got nine completely different characters. So people that are looking at Ameritrash side of uh, of the BHC, uh, they will see uh, nine different characters with different ways of winning that have got different strategies, uh, focusing on different parts of uh, gameplay on the table as well. So that gives mm-hmm. you a lot of different options to, to choose in between different game styles. Like I've seen like people that are playing aggressively, they're usually taking, let's say Athena Gore, yeah, Miss Major, uh, and that fits mm-hmm. perfectly um, their needs. Uh, people that are uh, the good guys, so-called the good guys, are taking visionary because they are just trying to build a big and successful colony full of happy uh, citizens, yeah? So those different ways of winning, especially that we have seen that uh, the win-loss ra- ratio for different characters is looking kind of okay, uh, it's it's a good thing to have uh, those nine different characters to choose from. So you won't get bored easily. Uh, there's nine different characters and you may play different, let's say, tactical modes of those characters. Because if you will get rid of the private goal in a semi-co-op game, that changes everything. I mean, that's opening <laughs> new options for you to, to play a bluff uh, against your... Uh, your opponent. So, yeah, I'm happy about those characters. I, I kind of like the thing that people like those characters and those are much different in terms of a history, back, uh, backbone history that they've got, the looks, uh, etc. So, it, it would be really hard to think See, of... You guys, uh, yeah? To more new, yeah, new ones. Yeah, because, I mean, you guys had the hard job because, like, I think they're great archetypal characters like i love them i love all of them i think they're great you guys had the hard job because you had to do like the mechanical math part to like make it work make it balanced i always just want more characters because i love these guys like like paul and giselle like those are my those are my guys those are my favorites you know but athena she's a she's a smart gal boris boris i'm a i'm a bit weary of because like anybody who's got that smart of a brain but works out that much is definitely somebody I got to worry about. Like he doesn't <laughs> seem safe. <laughs> okay, um, we do have one simple question. I know you guys want to try to get through a few more. Um, we've got a simple one from Ajax. He was just asking, you know, if there's any tablet recommendations, any you know, like smart devices to play the game. Uh, I yeah, can't think of any off the top of my head. Bluetooth? But <laughs> hello, <I> may. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything that will be if you are. If you will have a TV set close to you, anything that will be able to stream uh, like Chromecast. I, I'm an Apple guy. I prefer iPhones and iPads. But in this case, Chromecast is a really fine feature that you may use to, to, to stream uh, everything that you will have uh, in your app to, to one larger screen. So everybody will, will be able to look at the details about your uh, colony. Yeah? So that's something that is a problem solver uh, in front of a table. At the same time, uh, something that will have a good battery. I think that that's the most important thing because either way, you will be uh, choosing an option to to have it uh, hooked up to the charger. Just remember that the screen will be working all the time during the game and that takes two hours and some of the lower end devices may have some problems with, uh, with juice, yeah? With long running stuff, yeah. yeah and my okay. my recommendation about the tablet is a charged one. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, another another one just popped up in the chat. Um, Creating, he was asking, you know, um, is there any reason why somebody couldn't establish a new colony when they've previously failed, or is there like a cooldown? Is there like a time where they no are kind of like blocked out? Yeah, I figured, right? Yeah, no. Yeah, like one game after another. Yeah. Yeah, because because one of the things that I really wanted to do is I've mentioned earlier in this particular chat, like I want to, you know, kind of flush out my um, I want to flush out my personal region that I've gotten to get named after me. I'm really happy about that. Um, But like at the same time, like I want to go back and I want to get that capital planet and I want to I want to fill it up. I want to start like filling these planets with like multiple colonies. I just I want 
thriving networks Casey, of Casey nations. Stop, Casey, stop bragging. There are other players that will have uh, <laughs> way bigger, you know, empires like PBD, for example. <laughs> I, I, well, that I fully am aware of. I know <laughs> there's so, nothing I this, can do about those guys. This reminds me like uh, this, uh, this, uh, <laughs> this joke about one guy that is standing on the top of a, uh, like a sm super small house and there's like in the background huge stronghold that this huge stronghold should have like a pbd on the on the wall in this case and you're on the small house like, this is my place how do you so, know maybe maybe casey will be playing you know day and night <laughs> game after game i, well, I mean like, if, remember one if, thing if even things losing even losing uh, the game in uh, beyond humanity colonies is building something because yes it will it will add that's a true colony on the planet that uh, that is either uh, at the outpost for for um, Terran Republic or Outlaws. Yeah, yeah. correct. So well, yeah, you that, know, if, that's if right. Things, but, but if things can get back to normal pretty soon, like I can, I can see myself going to like the uh, the board game shops if they open back up, like the open board game nights, yeah. and just sitting down and be like, "Hey, <laughs> and, who wants to who wants to visit will, some extra planets?" I ask you that you will leave the box unattended, but with your account oh. connected, and <laughs> people will be playing this building colonies for you. That's a good Boy, idea. That sounds, that sounds really dangerous. I don't know. I can I can imagine that walking off pretty quick. I, I mean, uh, the, the, uh, the the thing is that this uh, universe that uh, Buckers are building it's or it's already huge, and it's going to be a yeah, much bigger oh place when colonies will hit the table. I mean, right now, after uh, switching to, to Lunar Bases, we have seen mm -hmm. sudden growth of ranges and everything. I mean, it's uh, it's growing much faster. With colonies, yeah. it will be the same thing. Yeah. And cheaper, too. <laughs> Technically. <laughs> I mean, um, the, 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 the difference will be that you won't be looking at the particular systems you will be looking at the whole regions trying to 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 use the influence uh, based on the megacorp and new functions that we are adding to the exogen to 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 affect areas around you so that that's something completely different yeah yeah um i mean here hold on a second let me pull this back up i gotta bring that um you know one of the things that's really interesting is when we first started off exogen uh, you said the entire map was 24,000 by 24,000 JU jump units, right? More or less, yeah. More or less. And then I was like, holy shit. Like, it took us months to get out, like, you know, 100, 150 JU. I was like, holy Lord, this is going to take forever. Uh, but now with lunar bases, we're, I mean, what's the diameter we're at now? We're 800 something? Like, uh, yeah, like an average diameter of 800? Yeah, something Which like is, that. You know, I mean, still percentage-wise, not that much, but you know, this you know, it's it's funny how big this is getting so quickly. Like, I keep wishing there was another zoom out option just so I could see a little bit more around me. It's on a list. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Uh, okay, all right. So we'll move on from that. Um, so this is a bit of an odder one. So uh, sniper was asking, you know, what kind of lore and longevity is planned um, long term for the time scale being so fast you know like we're doing 60 times real speed like obviously we launched exogen towards the beginning of the year in the in game time was 2066 now we're close to the end of the year and it's 2097 um you know what's gonna happen when we leave the and we're in the distant future you know like th the year 3000 um, and that, you know, that's really interesting because I know, you know, talking to Max, working on the lore stuff, the news, the updates, uh, we've got, if you take out the photos that we throw in there from time to time, I think we're somewhere around 40 or 50 pages of just backstory. Um, most of that has been written, um, but there's a fair bit of that. That's just kind of like the groundworks for future stuff. And then obviously Max has got a lot more trapped up in his noggin. Um, Max, I think the last time we talked, we had story, story content, at least, you know, like the, the big key points planned out to like 2,300, 
Is that right, or, or am I getting that wrong? Slight, slightly shorter. But uh, after the latest changes, probably we'll need to tune it uh, a bit because it's get, getting a bit too crowded with uh, big things happening. Uh, because of a delay mm-hmm. with a uh, delivery of BHC, we, we started yeah. filling up everything with KC. We came up with a couple of different side stories that are uh, that were meant to fill the gaps. Uh, but at the same time, those were growing into to larger branches full of uh, interesting happenings and events. So, yeah, definitely this is filling up not only this delay, but as this uh, at the same time, it's also adding a lot to the to the future. So, uh, yeah, probably right now we are aiming at up to 20, 23. Oh, oh, yeah, something like that. Okay. Yeah, so there's there's definitely a lot more planned. I keep wondering if we're going to have to change the in-game time scale somehow just cuz, you know, with the delay, obviously that's not great, but obviously we're going to be going for a lot longer than this. There's, you know, years and years that we have to all play together to grow. Um so we'll see what happens. Sorry, excuse me, just had to take a drink. Um <laughs> so um, so one of the other questions we had was, are there any considerations for information later being offered to enable players to fix their own games if needed? Um, so now that's, now that's a strange one. That's from Blab down the comments. Now, when you say that, are we talking about, are we talking about like, if you make a mistake or, cause we have the governor's token, we have that in every box that allows you to undo actions. You can go back uh, if somebody, you know, uses the wrong card, if somebody plugs in the wrong module, uh, you can go back and fix those things like that. But are, are we talking like bigger scale? Like I think can, it's more can, about so, soldering. Uh, oh, repair, repairing elements. Uh, okay, electronics. Um, so, Max, you guys were the last ones to talk about this more actively. I know that we had proxy modules. I know that we had, I know that we had like... Um, dummy module just like code fixes um we obviously have like a big supply of parts for yeah, uh, spare parts for repairs and customer service because things are going to 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 break it isn't nobody ever built something that is unbreakable you, you are always trying to make it as good as it may be but finally uh your dog will eat your arc or eventually uh, your child will burn the <laughs> shit out of the module and you'll end up with a broken game yeah so yeah first of all well you know parts. what hold on before before you before you get started i just want to remind everybody because this is something that even i forget which is as as a product colonies does have a two-year warranty right yes i'm not wrong yeah yes. yeah 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 correct okay Okay, just want to make sure. So, two-year warranty, parts and pieces, labor. Um, but but what, what after say, five years? Yeah. So the major yeah, issue with <laughs> so major issue with uh, with kind of electronics that we've got custom built for the for this game. It isn't just a Raspberry Pi. It isn't just a regular bits and pieces that you may get in a regular hardware shop. So those are custom uh, PCBs with custom electronics, custom bits and pieces that are uh, on them. So even fixing those uh, via simple soldering isn't simple because those are really tightly packed inside of an enclosure and especially the main board that is uh, inside of an uh, arc th- where you have got a 32-bit uh, microcontroller with a Bluetooth uh, and a lot of different bells and whistles built into the really small electronics board. I don't know if you have seen those photos, but those are really, really small ones. Uh, it's size of a uh, main board of a... Uh, smartwatch so for most of the regular regular human beings this kind of a thing is un- impossible to fix i'm sorry to tell you that and that's if you prob- try and send it back to us we will know <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> that's why we've got spare parts to send a new bits and pieces to you yeah uh but uh Sorry to 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 spread this kind of a uh, uh, bad news, but I assume that you won't be able to to fix those electronics by yourself. Just send them back to us, and we we will send the new one. Yeah, During especially the, the that warranty time. And yeah, 
still you can buy buy new uh, new modules afterwards or so or just PCBs or we will try to figure out the way that will be best for us and for you and to make it way more simpler I assume that will be uh, touching base with with KC so we'll have some spare parts in USA and some parts in Poland so it will be easier to ship those around yeah wait hold on I'm gonna have like a another room full of parts and pieces <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay okay i'm glad we had this conversation <laughs> okay well speaking of stumbling points <laughs> just kidding um so we had a question from the last ama we never got around to because it was just we you know, we like this one we ran a little long we're gonna have to cut this one short here in a few minutes but um you know when it comes to gameplay you know colonies what do you think the largest stumbling blocks are going to be for the new players? Like, is it just, you know, getting through the rules? Is it going to be, you know, just like, you know, connecting online stuff? Where, where do you guys think people are going to have the most issues? Uh, even though the answer is not easy one, it will be a short one. <laughs> uh, because we have played uh, very mu uh, a lot of games. We have played very many games by ourselves. We have uh, instructed a lot of people how to play the game when uh, on on the convents uh, or test uh, test games, and uh, we didn't hear constantly asked questions. There were a lot of questions: how to I don't know uh, collect artifacts, how, how to, to win, uh, <laughs> yeah, how to win, <laughs> how, how to I don't know build uh, the modules and. But we didn't hear the just one or two questions that were constantly being asked. Uh, so yeah, this is kind there, of everything. We didn't find any any real stumbling point. But uh, even if there were questions that were sometimes, uh, uh, you know, we heard them more than others, we tried to address them during the development process. So, um, so I think it's solved and if you read the the, the manual i think uh, you can see that uh, that it's as easy as it could be and uh, the one thing that uh, that we saw during the the play and uh, during the our games is that uh, someone asks a lot of questions in at the beginning but after a few rounds of play it's all uh, so so simple that they just people just start to play and stop asking questions yeah uh, yeah oh well i was probably just gonna say the same thing like I, I can't wait for the tutorial thing to be out because i yes. feel like everybody myself included like when you first when you see this manual some people argue that you know 40 some odd pages is long some not 20 i don't know what we're down to now but and um, casey you've been a huge part of it because we've been always explaining <laughs> rules with uh, with pavel that takes like i don't know 20 30 minutes etc we are going into details people are getting bored or they are forgetting about uh, <laughs> those most important things from the very beginning and i remember yeah. as you are tuning our method to, to five minute rule after five minutes people should start playing the game oh and oh that's right yeah yeah on I, the go. I forgot about that yeah so the, the very best tutorials that i have seen for the for the board games uh, are going mm -hmm. with uh, in exactly the same direction so you need to give possibility to do some actions for the player like for example Hell, hellboy Re remember pavel as we've been mm -hmm. playing the very first time that's a very streamlined experience for for an Ameri trash the first scenario is showing you uh, one after another the basic functions that that you've got in front of you so as you are starting the first real scenario pretty much you've got the fundamental knowledge about everything that you you should have afterwards you are playing with mechanics trying to to think of uh, your own strategies and tactics that you will be using in the game so that's that's a very good thing and uh, the thing that i hate that's uh for example uh how the hell this game is called Kingdom Death Monster uh, version 1.0 got like a book in which you've got all of the rules important and not less important that you won't be using probably during the first 10 sessions uh, mm -hmm. inside of a one huge bag 
and they've solved that with uh, with 1.5 that was dividing the knowledge into to sections and you are be being fed with this information one scenario after another and that was a very good thing but the first book that i've seen it was like a freaking encyclopedia that you you needed to learn from the very beginning till the vr very yet to even do anything on a table so yeah 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 that's too much that's that's too much that's goofy <laughs> <laughs> and then this, of course, goes back to a conversation I was having with Sean early this week about, uh, you know, he's into battle tech. And, you know, I, even I like my old role playing games, you know, 400 pages for a manual is pretty normal. And that's, you know, one book of what, five, 10, 20. So it's that can be there's definitely I mean, a sliding scale. Casey, Casey, but uh, look at this uh, from my point of view, it's. It's from us, for us, it's simple to make a complicated game. It's much harder to make it a streamlined to experience, to, to, to explain everything very fast. To, to Because I would like to play Colonies with guys that are playing different board games, but they are joining me over the weekend. So we cannot spend hours explaining everything. Uh, if I'm yeah. an expert player, I should have a possibility to, to onboard my friends as fast as possible uh, and play even on a, I don't know, easy or normal planet. Probably will win, yeah, with, with, uh, with unexperienced yeah. players. Uh, but after a while, uh, it should give me a uh, real experience with expert players. So I know all of those bells and whistles, those small gears that are under the hood, what what kind of uh, interactions are uh, in place in between different mechanisms inside of a game. Uh, but everybody needs to start somewhere. Yeah, I don't want to uh, have a PhD in space exploration before I will start playing the, the freaking board game. Yeah. 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 And that's, and you know, that was always my biggest problem. Like I really, I was, <laughs> when I was over here by myself with the board game, like before the tutorial missions, before, I was like sitting and I was explaining to all these people over and over again, this game. And I was like, okay, keep it short, keep it short. Just like 10, 10 minutes and then, and then roll. But then, you know, there'd be questions and that's fine. Like I get it. Um, but I'm, I'm so looking forward to like the full final version where you can just like, you know, grab your friends, be like, hey, sit down, check this out. And just people, you know, they got their stuff in their hands and they're playing. They're just being told, you know, force fed like their actions and like you're okay, just off to the races. This is, this is simple. This is beyond humanity. No PhD needed. Sims team training on board. <sighs> oh, my God. It kind of is Simstim. It really is. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to point out the fact that we have crossed the uh, the 90 minute mark. Um, and I feel a little bad because at the beginning I was saying the theme for this AMA would be uh, Megacorps. But I don't think we answered <laughs> one <laughs> question about Megacorps. <laughs> I, you know, this always happens. Like whenever we got a chance to just kind of chat and ramble, like we just tend so to let's say there's, there there's so much Megacorps to unpack. And there will be megacorps uh, that will be happening soon and you can do stuff and it will be fun and you will like it oh for god's sake <laughs> okay so it's the, the next it's time. the worst we'll, we'll, possible we'll, is the worst possible description of megacorps <laughs> <laughs> that's that's i think that's a very good description it will be fun it will be there and you can do things and that hits that hits all the that hits all the key features i mean not the details but you know, the main, like the overall arch and stuff. All of that means that we need to do a Xmas special edition, yeah? Uh, holiday special oh, edition AMA. Holiday special. I think so. Yeah, we'll have to get some, uh, we'll do some little graphics with like the Christmas lights and we'll put little Santa hats on everybody. I think that's, I think that's important. Blowski, can you get on the graphics for that? Uh, say no. Say I'll take. No. I'll take that as a, no. Say yes. That's a good one. Okay, I like that. Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, I I do think we need to implement some form of control at some point. We can try to keep these things to ninety minutes. Obviously, we'll do some more soon because there's still so many questions to be answered. Um, obviously, you guys can hit us up anytime. We're always on Discord. We're always available. Um, you know, reach out to us at any point uh sean's typing in some comments right now so you better be quick because i'm wrapping this up but if you get it out before then then you know maybe we'll chat about it 
And about those um, Mega Corps on in this AMA, like Woody Allen said, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. So it's it just couldn't be so so beautiful to to make this plan happen. Yeah, I mean, we we try to follow through when we have them, but you know, things things do happen. Um, all right, you guys. Well, that is, you know, an hour 30 for us. We got to probably get out of here. I know I've still got work to do on our Easter egg. So make sure you tune in for when the recap video is released. Even if you're just watching the ending, that's fine. But, you know, feel free to share it with friends. Feel free to share it with your board game buddies. Anybody that you think might be interested in some content about, you know, how a couple of indie guys are going out and making their dreams come true with your help. So thank you again for all of your time, all of your support. We really appreciate it. My name is Casey from the THM team. I just want to thank you for joining us, whether you're live with us or whether you're watching afterwards. Max, plus you guys got any things to say? Stay tuned for Pioneer 8890. Yeah, stay, <laughs> stay with us for the Easter egg and goodbye and thanks for listening. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thanks, you everybody. I'll talk Bye. to you soon. Thank you so much. Have a good one and a great weekend. Goodbye. Bye. Recyclone Command. This is Papa 337. We're on file descent for Austral 9800 A6. Speed 22,208 kilometers per second. We're 5,500 meters per second, altitude 827 kilometers, and descending. Completing cycle rotation, preparing for Atmos entry, moving the hex 4-1 on manual. Papa 337, we show two ETO warnings. Copy. ETO inspect, recycle, and restart. ETO clear. Preparing reaction braking thrusters. System checks are clear, six knot. Preparing to fire. Fire. Set rate 4720 meters per second, altitude approaching 20 kilometers. Deploy landing gear. Landing gear deployed, stabilizer set for fire. Down to 500 meters per second, altitude 4 kilometers and ascending. Stabilizer prime for power flight. Altitude 1 kilometer and descending now at 15 meters per second. Ground position nominal, tracking angle at 6 degree, inclined to approach. 500 meters altitude down to 9 meters per second. Auto stabilizer, tracking strong, noise 1.7. Descent speed 4 meters per second, altitude 200 meters. Touchdown angle nominal. Altitude 50 meters, descent speed reduced from 2 to 0.4 meters per second. 337, all system checks clear. You got this. 337, touching down. 337, has landed. Copy that. 337, stand by for cycle down. CEO wants to let you know there's a bottle of champagne in the inflatable half kit. Make sure it's for christening the planet. Copy that command. Do not drink the supplied celebratory champagne. Never even crossed our minds, command. What? <laughs>